If you can't see success, you can't learn from it. If you can't recognize failure, you cannot correct it. If you can demonstrate results, you can win public support. And remember I said earlier on, I would propose to you that you work in the public interest. It doesn't matter where you are. But I'd like to very quickly share with you, this is part of the CBOC study, is the changing focus of internal audit. Because the, the title, the topic today is really talking about the evolving nature of internal audit. And we've come a long way away from where internal audit used to be. If your internal auditors are still just doing the tick box compliance kind of thing, and they're primarily looking in the finance area, and they're doing pre-audits preparing for the external auditor of the AG, your internal auditors are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. The results that we see, and I'm just talking about the top five, there's a whole list, but I, I decided to just, because they're also in the interest of time, to just work with the, tops, the top five. In 2010, overall, and this is condensing it into the South African results, but taking the global results into consideration, focus had been on operational audits, auditing financial risks, evaluating effectiveness of control systems, investigations of fraud and irregularities, and audits of, audits of compliance with regulatory code requirements. What the study has shown in terms of where we're going into the future and the, over the next five years, you can see there's a significant shift. Number one, top of the list, executive compensation assessments. Now you can translate that further. This is not just about the money. It is about how leaders perform and what does that mean for the organization. Quality, so it's about the making sure that what we produce is of real quality. So the quality audits are becoming more important. Business viability assessments, the going concern issue, social and sustainability audits becoming increasingly more important. And if you don't have this at top of your list as audit committees, you need to make sure you get it on your agenda very quickly. Once again, it doesn't matter whether you're in the public sector or the private sector, it doesn't matter where you are. This is of utmost importance. And then due diligence reviews for corporate acquisitions, mergers, etc. And you, can't, you can add in that whatever um, major projects the organization is involved in. So there's a significant shift. What I now want to shift to in terms of my um, talk to you is talk to you specifically as the audit committee and your role in relation to internal audit have given you that background that I've spoken to so about so far. Number one, you should have in-camera meetings with your internal audit, um, specifically your, your head of internal audit. And you should be asking questions such as, what is the tone at the top in the organization? Does internal audit have the support from the executive leadership? And does it trickle down through senior management, middle management, and right throughout the organization? Does the senior managers support internal audit? Your, that is a question that you should be asking. Because remember, internal audit, the head of internal audit reports, reports administratively to the chief executive or the accounting officer or another, if, in, if that is not feasible to a senior person but senior enough that internal audit can do its job properly. But functionally, to you, the audit committee, so if, if, you, use, if you take the word functionally, Effectively, it means internal audit works for you. You are ultimately internal audit's boss, and you've got to assume that role. You need to ask questions around management's response to, fi response to findings and recommendations. Is, are we going through the same cycle over and over again? Are, is management taking the findings and recommendations seriously? You need to ask questions around in internal audit's independence. In a recent survey, we found that we asked the question, have you been, of internal auditors, have you been intimidated or coerced to change findings or sweep findings under the carpet in the last year? I'm just talking about the last 12 months. This was done last month in August. 70% of them said yes. Now that, did, that just shook me right to the bottom of my stomach. That gives us a very, very bleak view in terms of where things are at. Internal audits protection within the organization is the audit committee. So you have to ask the questions. And then you've got to interpret what is not said in the, internal, in the audit reports and ask why. Now in order for you to be able to do this, you need to have a good understanding 
of the organization that you serve. And you need to know, you need to have a good sense of where the questions, where the findings should be coming from. And if those things are not appearing, you need to ask questions. If you see internal order to suddenly being redeployed somewhere else, you need to start asking the questions why. Because this is what, some of, uh, what happens in some places. Management just moves internal audit somewhere else. Because it's, it's the questions that they're asking or the findings that they're coming up with are inconvenient. If suddenly an internal auditor is being sent on a trip that is not really related and it doesn't make sense in the context, ask the question, why? Where are the internal auditors? And then I would advise those of you who are chairmen of, of the audit committee, you should have one-on-one -on -one meetings between yourself and the CAE. Establish a very, very good relationship. Because that person ultimately carries your ears and eyes, because you can't go into the organization and check for yourself that you've got a fiduciary duty. Because in, if anybody's going to sue, guess who's going to be sued? And have a strategy between the two of them in terms of how to protect internal audit. And the question that you could ask, in terms of when you're having those discussions, how can I help you to ask the difficult questions that may put you in an impossible position? Because as a chairman of the, com of the audit, as, and as audit, the audit committee members, you are in a position where you can ask questions in such a way that it does not put internal audit in a position where their lives are being threatened. When you are aware that you are in an oversight role in an organization where it is that bad, where people are actually, where their lives are being threatened, find ways to get things out and at the same time making sure that internal audit is protected in that uh, regard. Make sure that your internal audit and department takes the lead in terms of combined assurance because you must make sure that you get assurance from all the various assurance providers. Yeah? You've got a whole lot of them and make sure that internal audit coordinates that. Here are some questions that you need to ask of your CAE. The CAE's capacity. What we often see is that organizations employ people not at the right le level, not senior enough, not competent enough, just for compliance sake. And then, of course, when you're sitting with a situation like that and the person's position is pitched at a very junior level, that person cannot make any difference within the organization. So that person's capacity needs to be looked at. You need to look at the, uh, the internal audit function's capacity. You need to look at whether there's adherence to the I uh, standards, but also look at the career path that the Institute of Internal Auditors in South Africa has laid out very, very clearly for internal auditors. And let me very quickly say to you, what we're expecting from internal auditors is they must have an acad academic qualification as a base. They must go through structured on-the-job training in their two tiers. The first tier is the IIT, the internal audit technician. It's a two-year structured on-the-job training program. The next one is the GIA, the general internal auditor. The top level is the CIA, the certified internal <coughs> auditor. Your CAE should be a certified internal auditor. And they should have gone through, having, having served articles, they must have gone through that process. We have changed significantly in terms of change our expectations of internal audit because more and more is being expected, expected of internal auditors in the marketplace. When your CAE is in a large organization or complex organization, our recommendation now is that they sit at master's level. In other words, they should have gone through an MBA type of qualification. And then you've got to ask, is the budget adequate? Is there enough money in the internal audit budget to make sure that that internal audit unit is adequately capacitated and that they are staying abreast with developments out there and they are being sent on training? Is the internal audit plan risk-based? Very important. They've got to start with, there's got to be a risk assessment done and internal audit's got to focus on the most important risks in the organization. Is the audit plan balanced with enough focus on strategic risks? Now, I spoke to a, um, a chief executive officer a few months ago, and I was absolutely gobsmacked when she told me that, you know, the internal auditors now want to look at our strategy. And I told them, no, they must focus on the getting us prepared for the external auditors. That is exactly not what we need. It's exactly the opposite. 
Your internal auditors have to have a very strong handle on the strategy of the organization and make sure that they focus on the strategic risk. Does the plan have adequate focus on matters such as ethics, governance, assessing the risk related to the reputation of your organization, customer service, and environmental factors? Seniority and reporting lines are, are, are touched on a little earlier on. And are follow-ups being done? Are follow-ups being done? Or do we go through, we go get the findings, the recommendations, and five years later, nothing has happened and nothing has been implemented? The next question you need to ask are, is quality reviews, quality assurance reviews being done? The audit committee should ensure that the internal audit function is subjected to an in independent quality review as and when the committee determines it appropriate. And the IA standards determine it must happen at least once every five years. That I quoted directly from King 3, so you should be familiar with that. So very quickly, why are the quality reviews important? For the evolution of internal audit activity, review of the current activities to assess current internal audit structure, methodologies and resources to make sure that best practice is being applied. Conformance with the standards, benchmarking with best practice, identifying opportunities to improve the internal audit capabilities and processes to clarify and validate management and shareholders' expectations of the department and of course to make sure that we develop actionable strategic plans to align internal audit with corporate goals. And as I'm about to conclude, let me remind you again that governance is a leadership issue. Let history judge us kindly. 50 years, 100 years from now, when the citizens of this country look back at this era, let them say that in this era, there were a group of audit committee members, audit committee chairs, people in executive positions, leaders, that took South Africa to the next level, to where we need to be, that turned this, that put the foundations in place to make sure that this country is as great as it's supposed to be. 100 years from now, let them look back at us and judge us kindly. Let them not say, those are the people who messed up and now we're playing catch up. And I'll just read this, um, this is a quote, an extract from Mail and Guardian that was um, printed in 2010. We will not, that's a quote in President Jacob Zuma, it can't be business as usual. We will not be able to blame apartheid if villages still have no water, no electricity, no roads. We will not be able to blame anyone else if children still study under trees, if hospitals are falling apart, and if there are still thousands who live in abject poverty. The onus is on us to change that. And with that, I thank you.